Hello and welcome to this video clip where we're going to complete a challenge called Entry Fee Calculator using a flowchart. Now the aim of this challenge is to write a Python script that will help us calculate the total cost when we go to an aquapark. And we're going to investigate the aquapark price list first. Um, what they're telling us here is that we know how much an adult has to pay for an entry, a child, and then depending on the number of adults and children in a family or in a group, we can uh, maybe have a discount. And that discount of 5% applies if the total cost exceeds £50. Now, in order to solve this challenge, we're going to do this in three steps. Step one, we're going to design a flowchart to think about the algorithm we're going to implement. Then we're going to implement this algorithm using Python code. And finally, we will use a test plan to check that our code is working as expected. Okay, so let's look at task one, designing the flowchart. Um, we've got here a few bullet points of the key user requirements. We need a program or an algorithm that will first collect some inputs as to how many adult tickets are needed, as well as how many child tickets are needed. From that, we're going to calculate the cost of the order, and then the algorithm will have to make a decision whether the discount applies or not, and if it does, it will have to calculate the discount and take it away from the total cost. Finally, we're going to output the cost of the order. So let's use the online flowchart creator, and if you look at this tool here, it's a drag and drop tool where you've got at the top here all the different shapes you can use in a flowchart um, in different categories. And when we start a flowchart, the first thing we do is we drag a start and we're going to drag this onto the grid here. Now, if you remember, the first step was to collect some user inputs. So I'm going to use an input block and we're going to type here. Now we're going to give that input a name, a variable name. So we could have number of adults and we're going to ask the question. So I'm going to use an input statement, input how many adults. Okay, that's my first input. I'm going to need a second input. So it's going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be number of children input how many children okay then we're going to calculate the cost of um, ordering all those tickets and this is a process a calculation is a process so i'm going to use a rectangle shape box uh, i'm going to call it cost equal and it's going to be the number of adults and if you remember, the adults were paying 15 pounds per ticket. So I'm going to time this by 15 and I'm going to add the number of children times 11. Okay, this is where we now need to make a decision as to whether this family can benefit from a discount. So we're going to use a decision block, um, which is an if statement. Uh, so it's a diamond shape. And I'm going to say if the cost is greater, technically, if they reach exactly 50 pounds, then that should also apply a discount. So I'm going to say if the cost is greater or equal to 50, then I'm going to um, apply a discount. So at this stage here, I'm going to use another process to calculate this discount. And I'm going to say discount equal uh, so it's 5% of the cost. So it's going to be cost times 5 divided by 100. Okay, now I need to show the flow uh, of my program here. Uh, that's why we call this a flow chart. So I'm going to go into the arrows here and you've got different types of arrows you can use. Um, you can also have different types of connectors. Um, so I'm going to say that if the cost is greater than 50. So I'm going to put here, if that is true, I'm going to put that on the side. And then I'm going to have another um, 
pass here in case the cost is not greater than 50. So I'm going to use um, one of those here like this and that will be the option if that is false. Okay, so I can clearly see what's going to happen, what decision is made based on the value of the cost. Okay, now if that is false, I'm actually not applying any discount here. Uh, so I'm not going to do anything. So I'm just going to put some rules to bypass the calculation of the discount. Now, as you can see, I haven't got enough um, lines on my grid here. So I'm going to insert some rows. I'm using this here and I'm going to click that several times to create some more rows. And then once I'm done, I'm going to press this here. Okay, so we've calculated a discount here. Maybe we should um, output um, that the family benefits from a discount. So I'm going to use uh, another output block here. Um, now, if at any stage you make a mistake, you've got the wrong block, just drag and drop it onto the bin here and then start again. So here, output, you are untitled to a 5% discount. And we could also display the amount of the discount. So I'm going to have another output here, output, discount, and I'm going to concatenate here the, the discount. Okay, now I'm only doing this if the cost was greater than 50. Um, and then one final step, I need to calculate the new cost of this order. So that's going to be a process a calculation. And I'm going to put cost equal cost, take away the discount. So that is the new cost for this family here. And finally, I'm going to output to the end user, the total cost of the order. That will be the last step. So an output total cost is, now we may put a little pound sign or a dollar sign, depending on which currency we're using uh, and display the cost. Okay. Um, actually, I could do the same for the discount here. I could put a little pound sign for my discount. Okay, so we need to make sure that all our connections are right now. So I'm going to use some more arrows here. I'm going to carry on. And I want that if statement, all these calculations about the discount to only apply if um, the cost is greater than 50. If not, then we are going to do basically nothing. We're just going to bypass it. Okay, so I'm going to connect all of this together. And you can see here the logic of this flowchart. Now that is the last step and it's good practice at the end of a flowchart to finish with the end block. Perfect. So that's my flowchart. Um, if you want to save this flowchart, there are a couple of things you can do before you do so. Uh, first of all, you may want to change the background color um, of your flowchart. So for instance, I'm going to select it to white and press enter. Um, and then you've got two different ways you can save your flow chart. You need to go to the import or export options. And when you do so, um, you can save your flow chart as a PNG file. And what you can do is right click, save image as, and that's going to download it to your computer. You can also export this flowchart. Now, for instance, here I could say entry fees flowchart. Now, when you download this, it will save it as a text file. You won't be able to do much with this, but the only thing you will be able to do is later on import it again and then be able to tweak it if needs be. Okay, so that's why you would save it this way. Okay, so I've created my flowchart. I've saved it as a PNG, so I'm happy with that. Um, I can use that in my documentation. I'm now going to move on to step two of this challenge, which is to create the Python code matching this flowchart. So let's go back to the blog post and we're going to scroll down to step two, Python code, and we need to go through all the steps again. Now we've started by collecting two inputs number of adults. And now 
because we're asking for an integer, I'm going to use an int and an input. Now int, remember the int function will convert my input to an integer value. So I can do mass with it. So how many adults? Question mark. And then I'm going to do the same number of children equal int input how many children. Then in my flowchart, the next step was to calculate the cost. So we had a variable called cost equal, and we said it's a number of adults times 15, to which we're going to add the number of children times 11. At this stage, we can make a decision as to whether this family is entitled to a 5% discount, and that would be the case if the cost is greater or equal to 50. And if that's the case, that's where I'm going to do all my calculations. So I'm going to say discount equal the cost times five divided by 100. And I'm going to output a message, so print, you are entitled to a discount, a 5% discount, okay. And then I'm going to display the amount of this discount. So print discount with the pound sign, and we're going to concatenate the discount. Now the discount is uh, a decimal value, it's a real number, so I need to cast it to a string first. So I'm going to use the str function to do so and then put the discount inside here. Perfect. And then the last thing we did in that if statement was calculate the new cost. So I'm going to do cost equal cost minus the discount. Finally, that is it. We don't need an else statement here because we're not doing anything if they can't get a discount. So I'm just going to stop my if statement and I do so by um, stopping my indentation. And I'm now going to output the final cost. And that's the last step of this program. Print total cost. I'm going to put the pound sign. And then I'm going to concatenate the cost. But remember, because it's a real number, one with a decimal value, I need to convert it to a string. And that should be it. That should work. Now, what I haven't done here, I've typed all my code, but I've never tested it. So let's do that. Let's run it. Number of adults. Uh, let's say I want 10 of them. Number of children. I want 10 of them as well. Uh, I am entitled to a discount of 13 quids and that's my uh, total cost. Okay. Now at this stage, it seems like it's working. Well, it's defi definitely executing every uh, aspect of the code, but I don't know if it's got the calculations right. So what I'm going to have to do now is test it using this test plan here. Uh, this test plan, we've already worked out. If you bring two adults and one child, it should cost you 41 pounds. Now we're going to see whether that's the case, okay? And then we're going to compare with different values to see if everything works, okay? So let's do test number one, two adults, one child. So let's run this, two and one, and 41 pounds is my total cost. That is matching the expected output, so I'm going to say pass here. Okay, I'm just going to say whether it pass or fails. Uh, one adult, no child, so I'm going to say one and zero, and that's another pass, 15, it's matching, so that's good. Hopefully all of them will pass. Uh, I'm just going to do um, one or two more here just to check. Now this one, I believe, is a family that will benefit from a discount two adults and three children. So let's try that because that's a calculation that was a bit more complex. And effectively, we get a three pounds 15 discount, which gives me a total cost of 59.85, which is matching the test plan. So that's another pass and so on. We can carry on. We've got some um, more test data just to really be 100% sure that our code is working and we've got some extreme tests like 
situations that are less likely to happen or even trying to break the code and, and see what happens okay now as you do those tests if something is not happening as you would expect um, you may then want to look at the last task uh, which is an extension task here where you're going to add some validation routines to make sure that for instance um, the user cannot enter silly data such as a negative number for a number of adults that wouldn't make any sense or uh, some characters like letters or punctuation signs when being asked for an integer value um, and you've got a few links uh, to help you on how to implement validation routines but for the purpose of this video I'm done I've done the three sections I wanted to which is how to design a flowchart online how to write the Python code and how to complete a test plan so it's now over to you I would like you to recreate the same flowchart, implement the code and test the code. Good luck with this task and thanks for watching. Bye for now.